Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this morning mountain weather update, and we are in it here in Colorado. Take a look at this. A giant loaf of snow. Uh, that's 30 inches overnight. 30 inches at Eldora Ski Area. That was one of the big bullseyes with this storm system, and you could add another 15 to 20, maybe 24 inches of accumulation to what you've already received. You may end up with 50 inches by the time all is said and done. Take a look at uh, Winter Park doing well, reporting 15 inches overnight. You could add another foot of accumulation. It's going to snow all day today. So you figure another roughly 12 hours of accumulation at an inch an hour, that's at least a foot, potentially two feet in some of these foothill locations above 6,000 feet. I talked about this yesterday um, in the morning and afternoon where that corridor in the foothills would be the bullseye. And that's exactly what we're seeing. In fact, here's Colorado radar. So the preferred position is um, materialized. It has materialized. The storm is mature down in southeast Colorado, the panhandles of Texas and Oklahoma. And that maximizes your lift over the top of the foothills the western suburbs of Denver, and then running all the way up to the Continental Divide. So that's where we're seeing the big snow. It's just getting, we call this upslope flow, but uh, over the years I've often called it upslop. It's very sloppy. The temperatures are marginal with this storm. It's just barely cold enough to snow in the Denver area right now. Um, so this is a backbreaker snowfall. Here's what I'm seeing this morning. Um, so this backbreaker snow continues all day today. It will taper off early tomorrow as the snow moves north to south. It will drop down into southern Colorado into New Mexico, and then the whole loads, the low pressure will retrograde back into Arizona and southern Utah and potentially even southern California until um, its dying day. Um, now looking at the pattern, once this thing kind of gets cut off, uh, we're in a dry pattern for most of the, the Intermountain West and North into the Northern Tier. So we have to wait for a pattern change, and that doesn't come until around 321 through 323 for the Tetons, the Wasatch, Idaho, Montana, British Columbia, and the Pacific Northwest. So it's going to be a waiting game for about a week. In the Northeast, you've got rain coming 315, 317, and then light accumulations on 318. Potentially, and I'm factoring this in, some heavier snow accumulation on 323. All right, let me take you over to water vapor satellite imagery this morning to give you the lay of the land. And there is our storm system right here where we projected. And again, that's just a special position for Colorado, a classic March type of setup. So then behind it, what we're going to see, and you can already see it happening with the ridging taking place up here with this jet stream. So there's a high pressure, and let me mark it in blue, that's going to be building in up here across the Pacific Northwest and BC for about a week. Well, it's about three days for the Pacific Northwest, but the influence will be uh, long lasting until we get to about 320, 321, 322. And what this low will do is sort of retrograde back to this position until it dies, the high pressure will kind of go in this position into that direction. All right, here's the latest forecast jet. You can see our trough, the low is already starting to get cut off, move back over Arizona by the end of day today. Here's 315 and today the low is basically in the same position and it sits there for days until it dies. Look at the Pacific Northwest and BC, high pressure ridging, clear and dry through 318 up there. Then things start to shift. Late 319, here it comes. You see the northern branch start to buckle to the south. Southern branch brings in a lot of energy and the meeting of the mines happens right there, 321, 22, and 23 with potentially a major storm system taking shape for the Intermountain West, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, Montana. Um, let me put some precip on top of all this. So that's your forecast radar by 5.30 this afternoon. Denver still in snow, you can see the blue. Still heavily snowing west side of town, foothills, Continental Divide, less snow west of the Continental Divide. You can see it's pretty much dry um, in some areas west of the Continental Divide, but heavy snow developing in southern Colorado, northern New Mexico. Here's the view by uh, Friday morning, 3.15. So a little bit of leftover snow for the Front Range, the foothills, and the Continental Divide, but everything's going I-70 south at this point. It's all spilling south, and the low's going to drag it out of the state. There it is. Drags it down into Arizona um, and parts of southern Utah and even Nevada and southern California. Mammoth might get swiped by a little bit of light accumulation, believe it or not. It keeps throwing moisture into parts of southwest Colorado um, through at least 318, 319. And notice it's high and dry to the north. Now that will change. Here comes our storm system, 321, 322, 
and then it really starts to spin up and it could also develop into a stronger Colorado low. Look at all of that snow on 323. That could be um, some heavy snow accumulation. All right, here's what's left for Denver in the Front Range uh, over the next 24 to 30 hours, 36 hours, something like that. So um, keep in mind, temperatures are very warm. So while I'm forecasting six to eight inches in Denver, you know, that may compress down to maybe four inches um, additional. But certainly west of I-25, that's where the big numbers are going to be running up into the foothills. You're looking west into the foothills. So potentially another one to two feet of accumulation. Winter Park, Eldora, Nederland, Longs Peak, Allen's Park, Coal Creek Canyon, one of those preferred positions. But then notice how the numbers drop off rapidly as you hit the Continental Divide and you go west. The, the numbers are much, much lighter. So, you know, there is that focal zone for, for bullseye snow um, with, the, with the, the magnitude of the, of the lift that we have at this point. Okay, let me show you the broad view. For uh, today, tomorrow, the next 48 hours, you can see the numbers in Colorado, but also northern New Mexico gets snow. The low moves west, you get snow in Bryan Head and also Snow Bowl. Next period, 316 to 318, you're mainly dealing with that low that will not go away uh, across the four corners, so additional accumulation there. But look at everybody else, high and dry, um, in the Pacific Northwest, northern tier in BC. It's a waiting game. And then look at the pattern shift. Now, the bulk of this occurs 320, 321, 22, and 23. And we could be looking at a foot or more of accumulation in the Wasatch and also in parts of Colorado, northern New Mexico, we could be looking at 6 to 12 inches through the Tetons, Montana, interior BC, Banff, and the Pacific Northwest. So that would be a significant pattern shift back by the time we get into the, uh, the 320s. Okay, let's go to the northeast. Now, I did factor in that potential for moderate to heavy snow on 323. Without it, the numbers would be pretty small. But you can see the potential if it hangs on. This is really optimistic. Um, across northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, and northern Maine. Otherwise, you're going to have to deal with two rain events coming, 315, and then potentially on, I believe, 317 uh, or 18. All right, guys, we'll end on um, the residual map here for this classic Colorado storm system. What remains, basically, the rest of today and tonight? You can see the numbers in some places, very impressive. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here this morning. Always appreciate it, and take care.